So are you ready to PR yourself? We'll remove the mystery from all things PR and we'll discuss everything from our top strategies to tips and tricks and everything that you can utilize to further enhance your brand or your message. I've been in media, I'm a journalist, and I'm also a publicist. I am Leah Frazier, CEO of Think3 Media and your host for PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. You guys, listen, you guys are blowing my mind. We just received notification that this podcast is in the top 30, number 29 actually, in the U.S. for marketing podcasts and in the top 100 in Canada for marketing podcasts. So thank you to each and every one of you faithful listeners. Thank you guys for sharing this out. Thank you for interacting with me. Thanks for sharing it on social media. We're just extremely grateful that this project has reached the levels that it has in such a short period of time. So thank you again. And I want you guys to just get interactive, you know, go on PR yourself with LeahFraser.com. Leave me a message and let me know if you have an episode suggestion or there's something going on with your business that you want me to bring in the experts to help and tell you how to PR it better. Again, get involved. You're going to go to the link in my bio at the Leah Frazier on Instagram. And I have a whole list of things you can do. You can join our private Facebook group. In that group, I go live. I tell you what's hot and trending in social media and marketing and PR. I put media leads in there. There's one I've got to do today. (laughs) So, and you're also going to want to interact with the other women. Um, And I think we have some men in that community now um, in that private Facebook community, okay? Because I'm going to start growing that so that you guys can discuss among yourselves how to PR yourselves better as we move through 2021 and beyond. Also, if you're interested, we still have the monthly membership available. It's only $49 a month, and you can find information on that at think3media.com forward slash think3edu. That is our monthly membership where I literally do a class session like I would teach with my students at the university. I do a class session on what's hot in marketing and public relations. I give you your takeaways. I give you something to work on for 30 days. And then several weeks later, we come back and we mastermind as a group to make sure that we're working on that one thing that you are just you need to get worked on for that month. And we continue that monthly. And it's a great resource. And it's a great way and affordable way for you to hear from me. I bring in experts and also for you to have accountability. That way you're working through for solutions for your small business or as an entrepreneur. And lastly, (laughs) you're going to want to stay tuned. Yes, PRYourselfBook.com. You're going to want to sign up for that as we get closer to the book being released. But also you're going to want to go to PR Yourself um, with LeahFraser.com online. There's a tab called Course and you're going to want to sign up there because I am re-releasing my live course one last time. I know I said that before. I'm going to do it again. I have just revised it. I've created a couple more modules and it's really going to go into a little bit more of an organized depth on how you can earn free media and press coverage consistently for your small business and your brand. And again, it's super duper affordable and I want to offer that to you guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and enjoy this latest episode. And I look forward to hearing from you all. Welcome back to another episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. There is so much going on in PR land. I can't even wrap my mind around it. I can't get on my phone quick enough to dial up Kiana and Chandra to try to get us together to do some sort of PR petty or PR hot news of the week for you guys. But let me tell you, it is hot in these PR streets. So 
If you guys haven't caught it, we did an episode discussing everything Shikari Richardson before the Olympics in Tokyo took place. We all had our opinions, myself and Kiana, we were on the same page as far as Shikari needing some major PR after Weedgate 2021. And of course, you had Chandra on the other side of PR land for Shikari um, saying that the athlete, you know, she was going through a bit of a mental health crisis with the death of her biological mother. She had to take a little puff puff. She didn't pass. And, you know, she should have been able to go to the Tokyo Olympics. So go listen to that episode. It's up on PR Yourself with Leah Frazier, the podcast, but in hot PR news. It's quite funny that we kind of went through the breakdown of what she should do from a PR perspective. I had suggested that Shikari lay a little low and possibly partner up with some mental health organizations, do a little good in the community, um, really become a spokesperson for mental health and athletes and the things that they have to go through and kind of segue out of the I smoked a little marijuana and got caught on my drug test snafu and then pivot into um, I'm going to find healthier ways to cope with my mental health issues and be the spokesperson and advocate for that. However, I have not seen that taking place. What I have seen, however, was recently after all of, you know, everything died down and the Tokyo Olympics kicked off, there was the release of Kanye West's new album named after his mother, Donda. And there was actually a Shikari Richardson Beats by Dre ad that kind of dropped right around the same time that has Shikari in it. Um, She was in all the visuals. Um, and it was a one minute piece by Kanye West. And so it was a part of, you know, her new campaign. I didn't think that it was all that impressive, to be quite honest. I didn't think that it did what it was supposed to do. Shikari missed the whole assignment. I mean, that's great that you got picked up by Dr. Dre and Kanye at the height of this album that people are saying is actually really great. But I think you need to focus on the athletics component. Um, There's too much showboating going on right now. I'm not sure if this was the PR move. I mean, we heard about it the day it dropped. I haven't heard about anything since. And that was about six days ago. I really believe that she needs a better team. And I may get some backlash for this. And I really don't care. I feel like the last thing you need to be doing is appearing in a Beats by Dre or Kanye West um, supported ad. Like, yes, the community supports you, but there's other things that you can be doing that will have a much long term impact and effect. And I don't think a music inspired video is going to do the trick for for what was entirely too damaging for your career and you didn't get to go to the olympics for it which is at the pinnacle what we've decided you know was at the pinnacle for every athlete you threw that away because you decided that you wanted to smoke marijuana and that is fine given the circumstance but now you have to recover and i just don't think that uh looping in with kanye west and dr dre was quite the move it didn't do the splash of what she thought it did it it, you know things on social media when you post it and it's hot and it's hip it, it has these little flashes of, um, it's like this little flash of light, right? People are excited about it, then it goes away. What I want for Shikari is long-term effect. We, as a society, have to stop getting so wrapped up in social media and our postings and what are we going to do for the gram and what are we going to do for TikTok and what what looks good and actually make those public relations moves that are going to have a long-term effect for whatever your goal is, whatever your brand message is, and to have impact, impact for your audience. And currently, I don't think that that PR move was quite (laughs) 
what they were hoping for. But hopefully Shakari, um, I hope it gave her some sort of a boost and that she'll do a little deeper dive into what her brand actually will stand for as she prepares to hopefully make the next round of Olympics. So that's one thing in hot PR news. And then we're going to move on. You know, here we are at the Tokyo Olympics. Everybody's going crazy. They've moved on from Shikari Richardson. And now here we are just right after the announcement that Simone Biles has decided to drop out of the team portion of the Olympics due to um, mental health issues. Um, And, you know, there's so much backlash on social media for this. I think this is entirely different situation. She's uh, kind of teamed up and has shown her respect for fellow Olympian and tennis superstar Naomi Osaka because we all know Naomi had a similar situation where uh, she decided, look, I'm not doing any press because of my, my mental health. I don't like what it does. I'm going to protect um, my mental health and I'm just not going to be bombarded with questions and having to talk and to be you know, just slammed with all these people. And here Simone is saying, you know, I I did what needed to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and withdraw from the gymnastics team finals at the Tokyo Olympics for the preservation of my, for my mental health. She actually said, I say put mental health first, because if you don't, then you're not going to enjoy your score and you're not going to succeed as much as you want to. And we're just seeing this widespread discussion all over social media, not just with athletes, but celebrities in general, where we're having to have a very public discussion on what stress and pressure and anxiety, societal pressures, all those things that maybe we haven't been so vocal about, people are being vocal about. Things that we normally wouldn't take ownership of, we would just kind of power through where now we're taking ownership of Uh, how things make us feel, how they make us perform, how they make us respond. And, you know, she's receiving quite a bit of backlash from what I can see from my social media network. But I absolutely 100% support Simone Biles. She went and did exactly what she needed to do at the Olympics. There were four moves that were named after her because nobody's ass that went to Tokyo could do what that girl could do. She is literally the elite at what she does. And if she is burnt out or feeling pressure or feeling to the point to where her mental health is at risk and that it could go further to damage her brand or damage the things that she's already set in motion, she's already been successful at, then yes, it's time to take a step back and take care of yourself. And I think sometimes we forget that these athletes are human beings. (laughs) You and I, we're human beings. I had to take a hard look Um, earlier this week, I was going through some things. I was experiencing a little bit of a burnout. I gave my permission, myself permission to take a damn nap, woke up. Somebody was texting me and I was like, haha, you know, LOL. I had to take a nap. I was exhausted. I was tired. I had to give myself permission to email a client and let them know that the way they were communicating with me was not resonating with me. It was making me very anxious anxious to open my phone, anxious to open my emails because of the way they have chosen to communicate. Now we have to come um, in alignment as to what's, you know, the best way to attack communication for the purpose of the project. That's the best fit for both parties, not one or the other. But I had to take ownership over the fact that old Leah would have allowed this person to continue to communicate to me in the way that they did And I would have never have spoken up because that's just what you do. You know, when you're under somebody's leadership or they're the the pinpoint person or whatever it is, you you just let them drive the ship. And now a society as a whole, we're taking ownership of our lives. We're taking ownership of our purpose here, how things make us feel, how our mental health is playing out and saying, I don't have to live like this. I don't have to be dictated by how many times you text me and you want an immediate answer. I don't have to have my life ran by my emails. And so to the same point that I stood up for myself 
and that I decided I didn't want to feel a certain way. So I wasn't going to continue down that path. It's not as drastic. Um, My situation is not as drastic, but that is exactly what Simone Biles was doing. And um, I just saw a lot of things on social media that didn't agree. So one person was saying, "Um, I don't understand what the little girl, what did she do that was so inspiring? People waited for, no, excuse me, five years for little mama to perform and she checked out. Yeah, she doesn't owe anyone anything. And the person was being very sarcastic. Um, And then uh, the person that originally posted the post in support of Simone says, you know, she's performed constantly and consistently for years and on levels no other gymnast has. She's brought home plenty of gold. So, yeah, she's done plenty of inspiring. If she is having a metal issue and she performed poorly, they'd still be calling for her blood. So, yeah, she's paid her dues and she has permission to relax. Right. And. He, this, this particular, uh, Facebook user just keeps going back and forth saying that now with the outcry of mental health, it's given athletes a, an excuse to just not do what they don't want to do. And I don't, I don't totally agree. I don't think this is a bad move on Simone's end. I think she went to the Olympics and did what she had to do. I don't think it's a bad PR move. Um, Given where we are and the acknowledgement of mental health and the role that it plays in each and every one of our lives, I think that her um, being honest as to why she was dropping out, if she would have just dropped out and not told anybody anything, people would have looked at that as an asshole move. Like, how could you have been, why is she telling us what's going on? They would have speculated. Remember earlier this year, she was in the news, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up for uh, many of you guys. Um, her brother was involved in um, a murder case. I think there were some uh, murder charges against her brother. He was acquitted of the murder charges, and um, they drug her name in it. And you just have to imagine, like, she's preparing for the Olympics. So she's not just going there and excelling and having to live up to this reputation and live up to this elite star athlete status that the world has created for her. She's also a human being that has a family that was recently in drama that dealt with murder and people were wrapping her name up in it. And putting her in all those news articles that had to deal with her brother. So this is just more than this young lady who's 24 going out there and saying, I don't want to compete. My mental health is at stake. This is somebody who literally has told us she had the weight of the world on her shoulders in order to do this. And she can't push herself any further. And I think that we need to respect that. It's a little bit different in my opinion, than the Shikari Richardson case. Um, and so I think Simone did the right thing. I think it's totally PRable. And again, with all of these athletes that are coming out, citing mental health issues, if I were a part of the team, I would low-key be, you know, getting them involved in a charitable component, in a community component, in a give-back component in order to work with these organizations that deal with these issues. I would have them going into the schools because there are younger athletes, children that look up to them and totally um, craft a message and a healthier message around being an athlete, mental health, and what that means. Uh, I want to shout out my friend Adair Byerly. She has a company, Entertainment Mind Frame. And with Entertainment Mind Frame, they do a deeper look into creatives and our neurological psyche and the things that make us tick and the things that stress us out and why we procrastinate and why we can only create when there's some sort of trauma associated with it. Like it's, it's so fascinating, but I think it's the same thing. I would hook up a Simone with an Adair and come out with this badass event, you know, that invited people to come in and tap into this and have these open discussions. But I would have my client at the forefront of that discussion, crafting a more positive image where it could be more accepted as to why she made the, the decision that she made. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. 
I mean, we're going to have some more hot PR news. I will have my resident girls weighing in because it's just a little bit more funnier when they weigh in. But those those are the top two that kind of came to my head. You know, we have Shikari and we have Simone, in my opinion, two totally different conversations. So if you guys have any comments to this, go ahead and head out to Instagram at PR Yourself Podcast. Leave us a message, send us a DM or write us a comment on a post that's going to promote this podcast or send me a message, Leah at think3media.com. Let me know what you think about either or whether you agree with uh, my take on it, whether you have a different PR move for either one of these young ladies. And we'll also be posting this on YouTube. And I like to see you guys get interactive. We have people out there commenting every single night and let us know what you think. I mean, we're not in this alone. And, (laughs) you know, I'm not the PR guru. I can just tell you what I think that I would do in those cases if there were you know, they were my clients. Um, but that's, that's all I have to say about that. And so we're going to take a quick break. You're going to hear a word from our lovely sponsor, Branch Farms, who, by the way, speaking of <laughs> mental health, I use them to calm myself down. They have the most fantastic CBD oil. And you're going to hear from them in just a second and how you can cop some Branch Farms products to help with your mental health possibly for 15% off. So stay tuned. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. We're going to take a quick break and I want to tell you about our sponsor, Branch farms. You guys know that during the pandemic, I was dealing with a lot, a lot that had to deal with mental anxiety. I've been having to meditate. I've been having to find different sleep rituals so that I could sleep a little bit better because it's just been a little bit stressful. And so Branch Farms has helped me out with my CBD oil. It's been amazing. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about them today. They are family owned. And like the hemp plant, their roots are rich deep into the soil. For more than 100 years, Branch Farms has farmed in the Southeast Delta region of Arkansas where agriculture has sustained this family-owned business for four generations. Branch Farms produces premium hemp-derived goods from soil to shelf, which means that they plant, harvest, process, and manufacture products, maintaining a high level of integrity during the entire product life cycle. Now, let me tell you guys, my favorite is the CBD oil that is mint-flavored, and recently I tried the citrus flavor, and it's incredible. You just dab it right under your tongue, and I am immediately just feeling a wave of just ah, calmness and it's it's absolutely incredible I've tried a lot of CBD oil out there you guys this one does not leave an aftertaste it's so smooth and like I said it helps immediately so um, just depending on whatever you need there's a lot of different health benefits to CBD Um, I just want to give you guys the brand that I use because I've tried a lot being a journalist I've had to test a lot of products in branch farms is the CBD oil company for me Um, they have a lot of other products so you guys just need to check them out at branch farms that's actually P as in Peter H A R M as in mama S as in Sam.com. So to purchase their full and broad spectrum CBD oil lines or learn more about their wholesale opportunities, including white labeling and vendor partnerships, go ahead and visit branchfarms.com. We'll have that in the caption and you can enter my code Leah 15 for 15% off of your order. This promo code is active now through December 31st, 2021, but you're going to want to go ahead and order that today because it is amazing. And so thank you guys for tuning in. And now back to this episode on PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. All right. And welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that quick word from our sponsors. I am so excited about the PR Yourself interview that I have coming up with PR Guru. She has what she calls the CPR of PR methods. Gloria Chow is going to be coming up pretty quickly to give you guys some quick tips on things that she gave startups and entrepreneurs to literally land big time interviews with like Forbes, Business Insider, like all of the big guys. And it's pretty simple tips. And she has a special offer for you guys at the end of this episode. But before we get into what Gloria has to say, um, I recently just did a really big, uh, did PR for a really big football camp. So shout out to Camp Exposure. And it was really cool. And it involved three former collegiate athletes. Um, A lot of them, I think three of the founders, they went to school here in Dallas. They all went and played at Kansas. 
Juan actually played profe- went on to play professionally for the Dallas Cowboys and the Jaguars. And they came back to the city of Dallas in order to put on a football training camp for underserved football athletes from the Southern Dallas communities. And then to bring in the big wigs, like the big NFL trainers, like Josh Hicks, who trains Ezekiel Elliott. They brought in Shamil Gary, who was a former NFL player. They brought in Steven Johnson Jr., who is so dope. Um, and he ends, he exited the NFL and now has an apparel, an athletic apparel line. So he provided all the jerseys and all of the athletic um uh, gear for the guys it was like really dope and then of course they had d rob come out and and d rob trains ezekiel elliott and so many others and they had nfl coaches and athletes and it was taking these players that normally would not have the financial means to hire a private trainer and to train them nfl combine style so i don't know if you guys ever watched the nfl combine when they're doing the draft these guys have to run you know a 40 under a certain amount of time. They've got to lift, they've got to jump, they've got to do, they've got to lift weights, they've got to do all these things to showcase their athletic ability. Well, they brought in these guys who are their friends to help train these athletes and do it over the course of three days. And it was just amazing. And they received on the field training. They got off the field training. So when I say off the field, they learned about personal development, developing a personal brand, staying your ass off of social media. That was my favorite one. (laughs) How social media can come back and bite them in the ass. And they needed to hear it because they're high school students. And they learned spiritual development. They learned financial literacy. Like it was really, 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 really cool. So in doing that, my point before I get to Gloria was that it was really difficult to do PR for a football camp in the middle of COVID, knowing that especially from a broadcast television perspective, Um, some of our stations just aren't going out and covering events in the manner that they did. And to be quite honest, a lot of the stations have let people go or they've reduced their, um, their workload as far as what they're going to cover when they actually do go out, what they're doing at the station. So right now during COVID PR looks a lot different And I had to have those conversations with my clients. And the reason why I'm saying this is that there's now that it's kind of opened up where I don't know what we're going to see with this new Delta variant, but many of you guys are doing events and you're wanting the news to cover the event either before or after or during. And I really feel like what was the success for um camp exposure which we got radio play ahead of time we had uh tv stations that came out and then we had stations that covered after the event was that we were prepared because we weren't really how do i say this we weren't sure like it was the first time where i just wasn't sure i've done plenty of events where i could pretty much say i know all of these stations are going to show up During COVID, you just don't know. You don't know how many people they have on staff. It was a weekend. You don't know who they're going to send out. It's just a clusterfuck. So what I did, I prepared. I was like, okay, we're going to have a file ready to go for those who want to promote the event ahead of time as a PSA, as a public service announcement. And so most radio stations, if you have an event that is done for free, which our camp was done completely for free for the community, for these athletes, many radio stations will discuss your event or interview you, your event under a community capacity because it's for the benefit of the community under a PSA. So you, if you don't already, I already know who those people are for all of our radio stations, but if you have something similar, this is just your PR tip, <laughs> You need to call the radio station and figure out who's the community manager at the radio station that I can get this PSA in front of to possibly see if you guys can run a PSA about my event on the radio a day or two before the event. And nine times out of 10, they will direct you to that person. Or if you know somebody that knows somebody, they can get you that person's name. And sure enough, we were able to go on a couple of days before the event, uh, secure an interview that way. 
Another thing that I do for events is I send out a media advisory and I will send out that media advisory. Let's just say, so for this event, it started on a Friday. The first advisory went out on a Monday and I sent it to all the news stations. And some of you guys are like, I don't know who to send it to. You can send it generically through their site or to whatever email address that they have on that site. Me, I send it to everybody that I have a contact with. I send it to their, their generic news assignment desk. And I also, because this was sports related, I sent it to the sports related journalists and also to their generic like sports email address. And I am very diligent with that media advisory. Some people will send something one time out and say, oh, I didn't hear anything back. No, I'm very strategic. I sent it out on a Monday and I, I don't bug my media. I send it out to me. That's like I'm putting you on notice that there's this event. Then I wait. On Wednesday, I send it out again, maybe with a confirmation uh, that says these are the athletes that we know for sure are going to show up. And I'm highlighting and putting in bold the best of the best of the best. I'm telling them to RSVP with me and I'm highlighting my phone number just in case you want to show up the day of. And then I tell them what time is a good time for the media to arrive. Then that Thursday, which is the day before the event, I send it again. And this time I'm actually calling the news stations. That's right, guys. You pick up the phone and you call the damn news station. I'm calling the news stations to confirm that they've received my advisory and that it is in the actual news folder for discussion. And sometimes I will wake up super early in the morning to make sure it's in the folder for them to discuss at their early morning news meeting to decide whether or not that is something they want to cover on um, that Friday or Saturday. And mind you, this entire time I'm on pins and needles because I'm like, oh, is anybody coming? Wah, 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 wah. And by this time, I had gotten several confirmations from some newspaper journalists, from some magazine journalists that they were coming, but I was still waiting on TV, still waiting on TV. Um, Friday rolls around. I do the same thing again. I call the news stations again. I let them know what's going on. I let them know that we're requesting coverage and I'm letting them know why it would be a great community story. And I'm doing this, um, enthusiastically, but I'm also doing it in a condensed fashion. I'm not trying to have a five minute phone call. So I have that elevator pitch down. And I know once they tell me, yes, we received the advisory It's in the news folder, blah, blah, blah. I also go so far as to say, if we have photos, B-roll video um, footage, and a recap, who and where should I send that to? Because we do have news stations here that will take that and compile it all up and run it on the 10 o'clock news or the evening news if you get it to them fast enough. And so I go so far when it comes to events to make sure that I gather that information as well. And sure enough, with that type of consistency, I know you guys are like, damn, that's a lot of work for just one event. But with that consistency, um, we had several news stations that showed up. And then I had one that ran it on their morning news that following Monday after the event because I got her the high resolution photographs and the video footage and sent her a recap along with a quote from one of the parents. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in addition to a list of the high profile people that were there. And literally she just loaded it up on the teleprompter and reread everything that I put. And even for the evening news, when CBS came out on that Saturday, what the anchor was reading on the CBS news was my pitch from my email word to word, word for word. All that to say is that everything matters. If you really want to receive the coverage, you have to be tenacious about it and you have to be consistent and you have to know why your story matters. Call the radio, pick up the phone. People don't even want to pick up the phone nowadays. Pick up the damn phone and ask for the contact. Who should I be sending this to? I have this type of story. Who? What's the best email for this? What's the best phone number to make sure that you guys receive this? Because I really think this would make for a great story for your audience. And that moved the needle. And I'm very proud to say that um, we received all the coverage that I could have ever have imagined outside of one um, news station that was just totally busy. Uh, One of my sports journalists was out on vacation. But other than that, we had some new folks come out that I hadn't met before. And now they're my friends. And now I can bug them now. And everything worked out great. 
Um, this was the first time the camp ever had PR coverage, but it's that type of grit and tenacity, um, tenacity that achieves those type of PR results. And you don't have to be a publicist to do it. You just have to be a person that is dedicated to getting that message out and dedicated to getting it in front of the right person. And so with all that being said, I know I have like, this is going to be the longest PR yourself episode ever, but thank you guys so much for tuning in and in the spirit of all things tenacity and tips and you just getting after it or getting your team after it. I am so happy for you guys to keep tuning in and hear this special interview that I had with Gloria, who's based out of New York, um, who echoes my sentiments that in the world of PR, you just have to be a total badass and go after what you want. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to have a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to hear from PR guru and everything to talk about her CPR method to PR. Gloria Chow. All right. Welcome back to another episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. I'm so excited. And I say that every time, but this time I really, really mean it because I have someone here today that can validate my madness. All the things that you guys say that I'm crazy about, all the things that you don't believe me on. I have a PR guru here today who is going to pretty much validate everything that I have been saying. So in the building today, I have pretty much a PR badass. Her name is Gloria Chow. She is a mentor. She is your pitch guru. She teaches early stage founders, just like all of you guys that tune in, how to hack your own PR. She has a proprietary three-step CPR pitching method, which we're gonna talk about today. It'll also be linked in the caption and on the website so you can access that immediately after you hear her just shoot all of this great knowledge your way. And she has helped thousands of bootstrap small businesses get over a combined 1 billion. I didn't say million. I didn't say thousands. I said a billion organic views and top tier outlets, such as the New York Times, Vogue, Fast Company, Forbes, and more. She's a former U.S. diplomat that never worked in PR. So she sounds a little bit like me or had any industry contacts, but her mission is to make PR more accessible to founders like you. I'm so excited to have this award-winning PR expert here with me on the podcast today. Gloria, welcome. And thank you so much for dealing with me, my crazy, and pouring into the audience today. <laughs> oh, what's up, Lee? I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad we are cut from the same thread. So how's everything been going? How's PR land during the pandemic <laughs> you know it's so funny it, it's like you'll make excuses if if you feel like that's your you're limited by your circumstances but there are people getting featured left and right i'm talking week of the election the week of the lockdown um so pr is an all all around your thing like there's there's time there's room for everyone to win and you know this right so it's like, are you making excuses or are you pitching? And the people who are actually getting over that fear and pitching, they're the ones that are getting featured. So you came from a background where you're saying like, hey, you know, I didn't start in PR and you know how sometimes that is, you know, people like, oh, well, I went to college and I had a degree in communications and I went to work for such and such agency. And really you went and you dug your heels in, you built your relationships and now you're kicking ass. So tell me a little bit about what that was like for you to go into an industry where you're like, okay, I'm the newbie, I'm the fish out of the water. How is building your brand and building your business? What did that look like for you? Let's just say the first couple of years. I will say that rejection has literally built my business, right? I actually applied for, I think over like a thousand jobs. I was so unhappy, you know, having this picture perfect government life that was really you know, comfortable for the next 25 years, I had a pension, but I was just deeply unhappy. But no PR agencies would hire me because the first question is, well, do you come from an agency? And, and the answer was to that was always no. So, you know, just like yourself, we kind of have to carve our own path. And literally what did I do? I started Googling news desk, New York Times, Googling the number for CNBC. And I literally picked up the phone and started cold calling from the operator. I don't recommend everyone do this, right? It, it's, 
doesn't feel great to have phone slammed in your face, but you start to pick up on patterns of what works and what doesn't. So that's how I came up with my method that's helped so many founders. So when I say rejection has built my business and it really has, is, is what helped me get to where I am. I truly mean that. Gloria, I love everything you just said, you know, I'll have interns or um, other PR assistants that will come in and help with projects and just that grit of, okay, I may get rejected on the other end, or just even to me, it's, it's so crazy that we have to define grit by like, you will actually pick up the phone these days. Cause a lot of people won't, they want to rely on, well, I sent them a direct message or I contacted them on Twitter, or I sent them an email and nobody got back to me. Like I'm, I love the fact that you said, look, I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time, but I picked up the damn phone. 100%. I picked up the phone and, and when you start to turn your rejections into patterns of behavior of this is how I got the person to stay on the phone for five seconds longer. And then you take all that information and you put it into a framework. You're like, oh, so that's what made that conversation happen. Right. And then you're able to really use that pattern to your benefit. But you have to get there. It comes from experience. And I will say, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, shouldn't PR be something that you hire an agency to do, they need to tap on the shoulders of their, their contacts. And it's like, we're in a pandemic. No one is going to fancy cocktail hours. You're not doing favors for your friends. So your, your chance of getting into the editor's inbox, it's pretty much just as good as the other person that's paying a fancy PR agency. So, so right now is your chance as a small business to get your story out there. Telling you, Gloria, you're going to join my team. Uh, <laughs> the, the team where the agencies and the firms kind of, you know, they turn their nose up at us because they're like, don't tell them that. <laughs> we want them to pay us the big bucks. And here you are spilling all the beans on the podcast. <laughs> but it's all good. You're absolutely right. And I want to hone in a little bit in what you were talking about earlier, which, um, you know, it encompasses a lot of fear. People hate rejection. And then the imposter syndrome, which we've discussed before, but not in this context, which is why I'm so glad you're bringing this up where it's like, maybe I'm not qualified to call CNN, right? Or CNBC, or maybe I had 50 phones slammed down in my face before I got to this, this news desk or this, you know, this news assignment editor. What is your advice for, <laughs> you know, putting your big girl panties on and just keeping after it? Because that, you know, we don't, people don't like rejection. They don't, but you know what? We did not get this far only to get this far. Right. So I think in terms of entrepreneurship, like you, you know what you're signed up for. And every time we're getting to the top of the mountain and we're like really tired, whether it's that rejection of that final thing you want to do, you got to tap into that. Why? Why did you start this business? I guarantee you it's not just I want to make a few more bucks. Right. It's I want to make an impact. I have a story. So if you tap into that intention that drives the outcome for everything. Right. So, you know, that as well, because that is your intention to help people PR yourself. You've built an entire platform for yourself. So in terms of mindset, that is really the driving factor is get back to your why. Now there's, there's actionable strategies on how you pitch the CPR framework helps you put your glorified marketing brochure that otherwise would, you know, basically the journalist would be turned off at because they'd be like, why don't you buy an ad instead, right? It bypasses that and tells them that you are an expert. You might be early, you might not have a fancy website, but you are an expert, you have value add and their audience needs to hear it. So there's a mindset part and then there's the actual pitch writing part and you need to get uh, really dialed in on both. So let's break this down a little bit because you're talking a lot about mindset, which that is the largest hurdle that not only do people have to, you know, I know we're talking about it in terms of PR and pitching. That's just a mindset. Uh, that's a hurdle that we have to get over just in life in general. But you have a simple mental trick that you offer or that you can tell people about that can help them get over this fear of rejection. So what, what is this trick that we need to have up our sleeve to pull this rabbit out of the hat to get these <laughs> secured placements? I, I think it all just comes from this one umbrella notion that it is not about you, right? You are sitting on a vessel of information that people need to know and people can benefit from in its current and perfect form. So it is your duty to get it out there. I'll, I'll tell you something else. I worked with someone who is um, in my Facebook group. He's 21 years old from Egypt. English is not his first language, but he was a startup fanatic. He wanted to get into podcasts 
and be in the same level as these top, top startups in the US. And he said the one thing that kept him going, despite the fact that he's from Egypt, despite the fact that English is not his first language, despite the fact that he might never be able to afford a plane ticket, is the fact that he imagined the startup landscape as a big puzzle piece. And there's these big fancy pieces that take up a lot of room and there's smaller pieces. And he said that unless he put his tiny little piece into the puzzle piece, the picture would be incomplete. So next time you think about the fact that the story is already written or that there's bigger players, think about the puzzle piece and how it really needs your tiny little contribution, no matter how small the, pu the puzzle piece is, it is not complete without it. So just kind of sidebar question. Um, I know from time to time, especially if you represent a lot of clients and maybe you're doing this on their behalf, or maybe even, you know, I have some clients that I'll give them like, hey, try these media angles or these are a little bit relevant right now or this is what's trending. And they get a little unnerved if they're having to repitch themselves kind of to the, you know, on a local level to the same stations. They feel like, oh, well, I've already pitched them once like last month or they just put me on two months ago. Like, what's your advice to, because if they're an expert, like you said, you're that piece of the puzzle that they're gonna need every single time. You're selling you know, yourself I short. 100%. I never heard someone say, oh, you know, I already sold to that customer. So I, I think they're good. They're not going to buy from me again. It is the <laughs> same thing. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, that's not something I hear. So if, if someone's, if someone's in that position where they're really thinking about that, then there are some like mental barriers that they need to work out first, right? If you truly believe that you are the expert, you have already been vetted, then you are on that speed dial. That is a great place to be, honey. That is not a problem. That, it's like good problems. Like someone's <laughs> like, oh my God, I opened up my inbox and I got so many people wanting to take me on a date. That's a good problem to have, <laughs> you know? That's me right now in Bumble. You know, I open up my inbox and I've got about 20 options in there that I need to talk to. <laughs> Girl, I see you. You're on fire on Instagram. I see you. <laughs> so I'm trying, Gloria, in these streets. I'm trying. So let's just clap it up for you because here's, you know, I like to say, I don't have to validate anybody that comes on this show. You guys are just incredible. But I just have to say you were recently awarded the pitch writing expert of the year for 2021. As a part of the influential business women awards, which is that is a gift and a skill set. So kudos to you. And that is all the more reason why I feel like we need to get down to some nuggets on this three-step CPR pitching method, because clearly you have this down to a science. And this is the thing that people struggle with the most. They get a news person on the phone or on an email and you just have vomit of the mouth. And then what, what happens? Delete, 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 or a click. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> you know, one of the other things I say is if you haven't done the work, whether it's using the CPR method or pitched, your pitch is going to be super long it's going to be, you know, that is like the, the sign of a rookie right there, right? And look, it's fine. We all got to start from there. But knowing how to pitch yourself, that is the number one skill that's going to save you tens of thousands of dollars on ads. It's going to save you all the headache of having to give the power to someone else to do your PR. And you know this because your podcast is called PR Yourself. So you know that this works. And look, there are, you can hire an agency, go ahead. But unless you know how to transform your, whatever it is you're selling into a value-driven conversation, you will never be invited to as many tables as you deserve. So the CPR method I came up with is literally from being rejected from every agency I've ever applied to, <laughs> is from not having any reporters on my speed dial, not to figure out what is the winning formula that's going to get the pitch super dialed in. It's going to look good from a structure point of view. It's going to make them want to open. CPR stands for credibility, point of view, and relevance. And your pitch really needs to have all three. I go more into it in my Masterclass, I actually show you the pitch that got onto Fast Company from a, you know, a founder who hasn't even launched yet. But basically you wanna say, and then probably like two or three paragraphs max with bullet points is what it looks like. Credibility is one sentence, why you are in the position to pitch. Now, don't go crazy here. Lots of founders take up like 90% of the pitch with credibility. I want your credibility piece to be literally 10% of the pitch, okay? It could be as simple as I am a founder, I am a mompreneur and I've seen this firsthand. Boom, that's it. P stands for point of view. That is the three bullet points in your pitch. It could be something about how the pandemic has changed the way we homeschool our children. And here are three tips that I've learned from you know 
homeschooling and ADHD kids. So what it is, is your value add, right? Is you can use predictions here. So if you are in clean beauty, it could be about three clean beauty ingredients that you think are gonna take over, you know, summer, spring, 2021. If you are in e-commerce, it could be about three gifting trends for, you know, the holiday season, whatever it is. I like threes for some reason. So, you know, it gives the journalist something to pick. If they don't like the first bullet, maybe there's two other points that they might be interested in. Gloria, I say this all the time. I'm like, I create Burger King or McDonald's menus. It's like, have it your way. Do you want A, B, or C? Like, what what do you want? Because one of these will work. <laughs> I love it. I love how we're validating each other. I want to have you on my podcast when, when I, you, you're just so wonderful. So thank you so much for that. Um, but, you know, definitely give them options in bullet points. It just makes it so much easier on the eyes, right? And then you just wrap it up in a very concise call to action. It's like, you know, I'm happy to speak further about this and connect you to actual people who can share more insight. So this is really a really powerful ending because you're saying, hey, I'm not the only one here. I am a conduit of information. I am a vessel of value. I can connect you to all of these people because a the journalist, they're not going to be tapped into your audience. Right. So offer that. Don't have the scarcity mindset of like, oh, well, they're going to bypass me and then not interview me. No, have an abundance mindset. Offer up your community. Offer up people who can also share their expertise. And then you just, you know, share your links. Do not add attachments. That's going to trigger their spam filter. And there you have it. I love that you said uh, sharing the community because there's so many times, whether it's like, breaking news or, or something has happened or something has triggered, uh, you know, a newsworthy topic where I'll get a phone call or a text message like, Hey Leah, do you know somebody that can do X, Y, and Z? And we need them to come on tomorrow. Or even yesterday I had an email from our top business magazine here in Dallas, and they were trying to interview one of my clients, but I realized from the language that it was a, like a multiple features where they were going to have multiple inputs from different experts. And I said, Hey, and yeah, sure. I'll connect you with her. But by the way, there's this husband and wife team. And I did in two sentences, I explained what it was more than happy to connect you to them as well in order to help you with, you know, your article. And even if they weren't my clients, I would have done that to your point, Gloria, because it, it shows that, look, we're on the same team. And I want this to be successful for you just as much as it would be successful for me. And honestly, if you do that, the journalist is like, wow, Leah is someone who's so connected to so many different networks. I'm going to keep tap, you know, calling on upon her as well. So your network, and you know this more than anyone, your network is your net worth. And so doing the work of actually cultivating a relationship with a journalist, that is putting money back into your networking piggy bank, right? It's going to allow you to not have to pay a PR agency 10, 20, 30 grand is that is your net worth. That is your network. This has been so, you know what I like about you, Gloria? You said, look, I don't have time to play with you guys. It is boom, boom, and boom. It's really not that difficult. And oh, by the way, it is not about you. If you do these things, you're going to be successful. And also forget all these people who rejected you, or may reject, you know, what you have going on. There's something out there for everybody if you follow this pitching method, the CPR pitching method. And I love that you have broken it down in such a way that's so digestible and so efficient and simple that I'm just like blown away, blown away. Thank you so much. I'm blown away by you as well. So we'll just keep that that admiration station going. (laughs) I will be reaching out because I am doing, uh, I wanted to do like a thought leadership kind of webinar and the things that you're pointing out about the value-based driven conversation and kind of knowing what your topics are and and that stuff, like this is so important. And I know people are like, oh, well, he's just talking. She's going to do that till she's blue in the face. No, I want to bring in somebody that actually <laughs> like, can validate me. So it always just feels really good. So I will definitely be reaching out. But I love that. There's one thing I forgot to say is, yeah. is, is here's another hack, the relevance piece, right? CPR stands for credibility and point of view relevance. Relevance is why the journalist should cover this right now and not five years from now or five years ago, because you don't want your email to be sitting and getting dust, right? So the relevance says, this is what people care about right now. And here's another hack is in the subject line, I actually like to write in the subject line, 
the the year or the, the summer or the season. So if, like I said, if it's clean beauty, it's gonna be three clean beauty ingredients. It's gonna, you know, be hot and trending in summer of 2021. Now, if you're an editor and if you read that, you're like, oh, this is this is for me right now, right? right. So put, put in the year, put in the month, put in the whatever, Mother's Day, whatever it is. If you're doing like a gift guide thing, just, just make it relevant. I love it. You just have so many useful tools. And do you, do you ever do like, how can people connect with you? Do you do live, you know, webinars? Like, do they sign up for your email list? Like, how can we get people more tapped in? Because you are, I feel like where the world is going with so many small business owners and entrepreneurs and startups, like this is the information they need to be successful because you know, and I know sometimes they get in there and marketing and PR is not even in the budget. We're not even a consideration. (laughs) <laughs> it's especially not with the prices they charge in New York. Woo we exactly. <laughs> Look, they, I'm not hating on agencies and neither are you. I'm just saying that for the small business owner, the bootstrap founder who's trying to do it all, it's just not feasible. And there's no one out there serving them. So right. that, that's my audience, right? So yes, I have a free Facebook group. People say that I give so much value and they're going to pay for it, but I want to keep it free. It's called Small Biz PR Pros. You can go to getfeaturednow.com and I go live in it every Friday with a guest expert. And I have a feeling that you're going to be one of them soon. <laughs> so watch out. That great. I love great how group. we're like swapping. Cause I'm like, yeah, you got to come in my Facebook group too. <laughs> 100%. We do tax, tax, you know, like actionable strategies. I actually interview a founder who, who used my CPR method to get featured. I just interviewed someone who is a wholesale expert, how to get your like unknown brand in the 600 stores. So if you make a physical product, every Friday we're serving up something fresh and new. And then I have my masterclass, which people can watch on demand or live, gloriachowpr.com slash masterclass. My last name is spelled C-H-O-U. And people have watched that masterclass and DM me and is like, I live in Australia and I use your methods and I got onto like Australian Vogue. Here's a free set of bed sheets that we make. And I was like, okay, great. So <laughs> it, it stuff works, you know, so just watch it. It's, it's just one hour of your time. I promise you it's going to be worth it. It's going to transform the way you think about your business and your messaging. Well, and I'm on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So tell us, Gloria, give us the website, give us your Instagram handles. Can they link up with you on LinkedIn? Give us all the details. Oh, and if you DM me the word pitch on Instagram, so I'm at Gloria Child PR, I will give you a free gift just, just for your listeners. It's going to be a walkthrough of how to pitch and get yourself onto podcasts. Because I think it's so important now. I mean, everyone's making podcasts. It's such an authentic way to long form storytell. I will give you the step by step method on how to apply the CPR method to a podcast and actually give you a podcast pitching template. Boom. So just DM me the word pitch, tell them Leah sent you, and then I'll hook you up. And I will say it works. So Gloria is here today. She killed it. I was like, oh, yeah, got to have her on. So, <laughs> so thank you yep, so I much. I pitched you. <laughs> I did that. And you're awesome. So thank you so much, Gloria, um, for coming on. You guys, please utilize everything that she said today. If you're watching this, you know, we have this on YouTube. So a lot of people like to put it on while they're cleaning or doing their makeup, I've heard. But go into that caption. I have hyperlinked everything from her website to her Instagram, go and connect and follow, but also sign up for her email list, um, get connected with her about her CPR pitch and method, and just shoot her a nice message and let her know how much this has helped you out. And again, thank you guys so much for being the faithful listeners that you are. Show some love, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Tell me that you want Gloria back because I already want Gloria back. So I'm bringing her back whether you like it or not. But (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, I want your opinion, but I don't want your opinion. I'm bringing Gloria back, whether you like it or not. But if you have some sweet words you want me to pass on to Gloria, you know what to do. Send me an email, Leah at think3, spell three all the way out, media.com. And until next time. <laughs>